Welcome to World War II Chronicles, a weekly tribute to America's fighting men and women in commemoration of the Second World War. These programs are narrated by Ed Herlihy and are based on the news broadcasts of the war period from the recorded sound collection of the National Archives in Washington, D.C. By December 1943, General MacArthur was prepared to launch the final phase of Operation Cartwheel, landings on the island of New Britain, home to the huge Japanese base at Rabaul. U.S. troops landed at Arawe in mid-December 1943, encountering little resistance. American Marines have established two beachheads in the Cape Gloucester area of the Japanese island of New Britain. On December 26th, U.S. Marines landed unopposed at Cape Gloucester. In the far Pacific, American Marines are making good progress in their new operations at Cape Gloucester, New Britain, where our men went ashore without loss. Seven hours after the landings, the Jap Air Force put up the first resistance but lost 61 planes. The weather proved to be a much more formidable opponent on New Britain than the Japanese. Monsoons with violent winds decimated the island, dropping 16 inches of rain in a single day. On New Britain Island, the rapidity of the marine advance indicates that the important Cape Gloucester Airdrome may already be in American hands. Last reports, more than 24 hours old, placed the Marines within a mile and a half of their objective. Located at Cape Gloucester was an airfield, which the Japanese were in the process of building. The Marines struggled to seize the hill overlooking the field. The latest of these victories to be reported is the capture of Bloody Hill 660 overlooking Borgen Bay on New Britain Island, which marks the triumph of a small-scale but very tough campaign waged by our Marines under tropical rains for nearly 10 days. Tanks lead the way. Squads of riflemen in close formation follow in their tracks. This is how the Marines advanced inland from their beachhead to the Cape Gloucester airstrip. By the time U.S. forces began their airstrikes against Rabaul, the Japanese fortress had ceased to be the great objective in the Allied campaign. Growing American strength had placed greater targets in sight. I'm Ed Hurley. Join me next time for World War II Chronicles. World War II Chronicles was produced by the American Veterans Center and Radio America in cooperation with the National Archives. To listen to more episodes, subscribe on iTunes or visit AmericanVeteransCenter.org. We need your help to keep the legacy of our World War II generation alive. Visit AmericanVeteransCenter.org to make a donation to support World War II Chronicles and the ongoing work of the American Veterans Center.